Do you want a brand new Joey Porter Jr. Steelers jersey? Well, you have a chance to win one if you subscribe to Steelers Talk right now. We're going to be doing a raffle for a Joey Porter Jr. Steelers jersey during our week one watch party live here on the channel. When the Pittsburgh Steelers face the San Francisco 49ers at AccraSure Stadium in week one of the 2023 NFL season. we got 57 days to get just over 2,000 more subscribers. So if you want a brand new Joey Porter Jr. Steelers jersey, click that subscribe button right now. And then also stick around to the end of today's video where I got two, not just one, but two big announcements for you here on Steelers Talk. I'm Jack Sperry from Chat Sports. You are watching Steelers Talk, and we got a great slate of Steelers news and rumors to cover on today's show. Starting with Hall of Fame cornerback Rondé Barber, who has named Steelers quarterback Kenny Pickett as a dark horse MVP candidate heading into the 2023 season. This is what Rondé had to say about Pittsburgh's QB1. Kenny Pickett showed that he has some serious game down the stretch in 2022 and that he is suited for the NFL. He's got two really good young receivers and a stud tight end. If the Pittsburgh Steelers defense uh, rebounds, he'll get them into the playoffs. Now, I disagree with Rondé on two specific points here of his quote of his article that he wrote for the 33rd team. Number one is that Pickett was just okay down the stretch. He was not really balling out or anything like that. And then second, the defense doesn't need to rebound. So let's take this one at a time here. Number one, Kenny Pickett down the stretch, he was just okay, right? 59.6 completion percentage. That's definitely lower than you want to see it. The yards per att uh, attempt is, is better than it was uh, to start his career at 6.5. That's about league average. And then the touchdown to interception ratio was a lot better than it was in the earlier part of the season when Pickett was throwing two to three interceptions per game there. Six to one is a lot better, uh, especially the interception number. But when it comes to the quarterback here, this is definitely more than what the Steelers fans are going to be expecting from Kenny Pickett here in 2023. Uh, and this is definitely far from balling out. He did have some nice uh game-winning drives there in the fourth quarter late in the season against the Raiders and the Baltimore Ravens. But overall, Steelers fans are going to need these numbers to improve if Kenny Pickett is going to be their franchise quarterback for the next decade. And then when it comes to the defense, it doesn't need to rebound. It just needs to have T.J. Watt on the field. Overall, the defensive numbers were just about uh, uh, maybe a little bit above average for the Steelers. But that was because T.J. Watt was off the field for almost half the year. When T.J. Watt was there on the field, the Steelers' defense was elite. Number one or number two in most defensive categories. Second in points per game allowed. First in total yards per game allowed. First in takeaways with 18. And then second in sacks with 35. So if T.J. Watt is on the field, the defense is going to be great. I fully expect him to be a top three unit in the National Football League this year. But let's shift back to Kenny Pickett here and why I think an MVP is seriously unlikely for Kenny Pickett. But don't worry, guys. I still think he's going to have a very solid sophomore season. But the reason why MVP is very unlikely is because this is going to be a run-centric offense. Offensive coordinator Matt Canada has said time and time again, this, this offense, is the, the identity here is going to be with Najee Harris and the run game. And with more run plays means less opportunities for Kenny to fill up the stat sheet because you're going to have to do that if you're going to win a most valuable player award in the National Football League. And let's just face it, guys. Kenny still has a lot to prove as, a, as an NFL quarterback. Now, these are still things that he can work on, that he can improve on, all these different things. I mean, for love of God, he was a rookie last year, but I still think the pocket presence needs to get a lot better. Uh, he likes to leave clean pockets if his first read isn't there. He needs to learn to stick in the pocket and get to his third, fourth read and really go through his progressions the footwork is the same way uh, after those first two reads like he's just not he just breaks down footwork wise and that needs to get better over the course of his career if he's going to be a true franchise quarterback and then a big concern that I had uh, uh, with his rookie film is that the anticipation uh, and anticipating open space specifically against zone coverage 
needs to get a lot better. He was actually really good at targeting uh, man coverage last season, but defenses started to pick up that he has some trouble uh, diagnosing zone defenses and anticipating open space, which in the NFL you have to be able to do because those windows are so tight that you have to anticipate open space, and Pickett definitely needs to improve in that area if he's going to become the franchise quarterback for the black and gold for many years to come. Now the good news here is that uh, I don't think the Steelers need Kenny Pickett to be an MVP caliber quarterback in order to have success this year. My expectation for Kenny Pickett, and I think it's a very reasonable expectation, is that he's a reliable starting quarterback who protects the football, keeps those interception numbers low, keeps the completion percentage high, and then makes the big plays when you need him to in the fourth quarter, just like he did at the end of his rookie season. When there's a big play to be made in the fourth quarter, does he have the moxie to deliver? I think he showed that he has that confidence in himself and that poise in the fourth quarter to make those big plays, and that's what the Steelers really need from him because I think the run game is going to be really solid and I think the defense is going to be able to dominate uh, other teams and keep games close. So as long as Kenny is able to finish those games there in the fourth quarter, which I think that he is, I think he's going to have a very successful sophomore campaign. And although he may never be an MVP caliber guy, that is okay as long as this defense and this run game are rolling. So is Kenny Pickett a dark horse MVP candidate? Does KP have a shot at the MVP here in 2023? Give me a hell yes or a hell no down there in the comment section. This is going to be the pinned comment on today's show. So YouTube's going to throw you an ad break here in just a couple of seconds. Take advantage of that time, but give me a hell yes or a hell no. All right, now our next topic on today's show is that Le'Veon Bell, former Steelers running back, has apologized to Steelers fans for sitting out the 2018 season. Of course, he held out trying to get more money from the Pittsburgh Steelers, and he just straight up did not play the entirety of the 2018 season. This is what Bell had to say. I never apologized to the fans for really sitting out or leaving the Steelers. I never apologized, so I want to say I apologize for leaving the best damn fans there is in this damn world. I shouldn't have left. I apologize. I should have never I should I should never should never have left. I apologize. That's my fault. That's on me. So I think he apologized about 20 times in that quote. But coming up here, I'm going to give you my thoughts on Le'Veon Bell's apology and whether or not I forgive him. Uh, for not playing in the 2018 season and really playing a big part in some of the struggles that the Steelers had that season. But first, go to our friends at Fanatics here at chatsports.com slash Steelers combo to get your hands on this awesome Steelers t-shirt combo just in time for the 2023 season. I love that black short sleeve there with the Steelers helmet. And then, of course, you got the white long sleeve, which is a lot more forgiving for the summer, much better than a black one, I will say. So go to chatsports.com slash Steelers combo. If you use that link, Fanatics will know that we sent you guys. So my take on Le'Veon Bell's apology is that I'm willing to accept it. All right, he's somebody that has taken a look at what happened during that season, and he said, you know what, guys, I made a mistake, and I am sorry about that. And if somebody's willing to admit that they made a mistake, I'm 100% willing uh, to be forgiving here and accept his apology. But let me know what you guys uh, are, are feeling about Le'Veon Bell right now. Are you going to accept his apology for sitting out the 2018 campaign? Give me an A in the comments section if you accept the apology, or if you don't, type D down there in the comments. All right, now we got a big injury update for Steelers training camp here, which is that Cole Holcomb, the newly signed inside linebacker here, is now fully healthy and is a full go for the start of Steelers training camp, which starts on July 26, which is, of course, great news. Formerly with the Washington Commanders last season, signs with the Steelers in free agency this year, and he's expected to be that number one guy in the inside linebacker room this year next to Landon Roberts. Of course, you got Mark Robinson as well that could potentially make some noise as kind of, kind of a thumper, maybe a different little changeup that Terrell Austin can use there. Of course, you got Nick Kwiatkowski and Tanner Muse, some guys with some experience. Uh, to round out your depth and although there's not that true impact player here in this inside linebacker room like a Bobby Wagner or Fred Warner or something like that I think this is very solid with very good depth 
And, you know, this isn't going to make the, you know, the linebackers aren't going to be making the splash plays this year. It's going to be the pass rush in the secondary. But I think this is more than good enough for the Steelers to have success defensively here. And I think the middle of the field will be secure with Cole Holcomb and Elandon Roberts fully healthy heading into training camp. So let me know what your thoughts are on the Steelers inside linebacker room is right now. Are you worried about this room heading into the 2023 season? Type W if you're worried about this group or if you think that the inside linebackers are fine for the Pittsburgh Steelers, type NW for not worried. All right, so we made it to the end of the news and rumors portion of today's show, but we got two big announcements for the channel here. Number one, we're going to have a player interview here. So Steelers cornerback Madre Harper is going to be on the show tomorrow. We're going to be trying to get that video out around noon uh, Central Time, 1 p.m. Eastern. So uh, if you want to see us uh, interview uh, Madre Harper here on the channel, make sure to turn on your notifications because it's going to be coming out tomorrow. And then also on Steelers Talk Live this week, if you want to go to a Pirates game with me, we are going to be raffling off a ticket for the June 28th uh, Pirates game where you can go with me and my girlfriend Cassie to PNC Park and we can take in a Pirates game together. So if you want a chance to win that pirate, those Pirates tickets, uh, make sure to stop by on Wednesday for Steelers Talk Live where we're going to be raffling those off again July 28th. That's going to be a Friday. So if you're able to be in the Pittsburgh area and you want to meet me, you want to go to a Pirates game with me, make sure uh, you get your hat in the ring there on that raffle. All right, that's going to be it for today's show. Yenzers, really do appreciate all the support. Make sure you click that subscribe button because if you made it to the end of today's video, we must be doing something right and it gets you in the running for that Joey Porter Jr. jersey that we're going to be raffling off week one versus the 49ers. Really do appreciate all the support, guys. I will see you guys later. And as always, here we go, Steelers.